Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders in the digital infrastructure environment. And I, we are actually coming to you live from Data Cloud USA in the Lone Star State of Austin, Texas. And I have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Trenton Thornock. Trenton, is, uh, Trenton, how about if I get your name right? Trenton is the CEO of Prometheus hyperscale. Trenton, welcome to JSA TV. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. So Trenton, um, big news coming from you. But before we get into that big news, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about Prometheus? So Prometheus is the expansion of what began as Wyoming hyperscale. So mm -hmm. Wyoming hyperscale is still the project entity in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. uh, what Prometheus uh, is doing is we're expanding the Wyoming campus, first of all, from 120 megawatts, where it was originally mm -hmm. uh, planned, to a gigawatt. <laughs> is that all? <laughs> That's all. Uh, we have a distributed generation developer partner in mm -hmm. Wyoming who has uh, six, excuse me, eight billion dollars in closed capital. And so they're responsible for the power generation. We're responsible for expanding the data centers. Um, in Trenton, um, and, and no offense to anyone that I have interviewed over the last two days, but this was the one interview that I couldn't wait to have. And it is because of that uh, data center in Wyoming and some of the truly uh, innovative, we throw that word around too much in our industry, uh, but it couldn't apply any more uh, than what you are doing in Wyoming. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about that data center campus and uh, kind of uh, from its kind of its origins and ultimately uh, where things are going. Right. So the origins were in trying to figure out how to do 100% liquid hyperscale. Mm -hmm. And originally the idea was to take water usage to zero and to figure out how to massively slash energy consumption. And really the only way to do that is through liquid. Frankly, nobody in the industry seemed to give a damn about sustainability four years ago when yeah. I started. Some still don't, uh, but the main reason why we went down this path was to reduce cost. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, if I could build a better business that was more sustainable economically and save the environment at the same time, that was an ideal answer. And that's really where we got to. So since 2021, when we finished our basis of design and our engineering based on the uh, current chips that are out there for AI uh -huh. and becoming available in November, like NVIDIA's Blackwell, and the chips that are coming over the next 18 months, right. we have made zero, zero changes to our design. <laughs> so the whole concept with Prometheus is supersizing Wyoming, number one, and number two, we've announced other locations that we've been working on for several years, mm -hmm. Uh, in Colorado and Arizona. And so the Wyoming data center becomes the template that we intend to replicate around mm -hmm. Western US initially. And then we'll go further afield later down the, rock, the line. So many things to un unpack here, but uh, the, the one thing, uh, to your point, uh, you know, four or five years ago, um, nobody was talking about it. And those who were, it was largely lip service. And no offense to anybody, anybody uh, you know, at this show or anybody doing, um, it was, it, it, the, the pressure was there. They were seeing it. They had, a, uh, they had a response to the sustainability question, but what was really kind of happening under the hood wasn't particularly sustainable yet. Um, but now here we are four or five years later and we have folks like Prometheus who truly feel like, or from my seat anyway, truly feels like this, the, the, from, from uh, original design construction um, through uh, implementation uh, with no changes to, to, to that overall design, you're mapping or, or creating a blueprint for how this is supposed to work everywhere. Right. Everyone's trying to figure it out and we're already there. Uh, and we've been there for some time. So, you know, if we talk about sustainability, still I think a lot of people don't care, mm -hmm. frankly. And that's fine. Yeah. Because what happened was we went down this path 
that caused us to architect a data center that could handle different types of liquid development. So we can do rear door heat exchange racks. We're going to get a little technical. Mm -hmm. We can do single phase immersion. We can do uh, two phase direct chip. We can do other direct chip high density applications. So that part's already solved. What happened was we went from a fringe designer engineer to right in the middle of the fairway when density started to increase, mm -hmm. right? So we know what the density is now. What we need to be doing is building for the density that's going to be in the market 18 months from now. Yeah. Not right now, Yeah. 18 months to two years from now. So unless that has been part of your design for a couple of years, no matter how much money you throw at it, uh, right now, Resources are scarce. The engineers who have the expertise to do this are mm -hmm, scarce. Mm -hmm. We know that some of our project team members have dispersed and are working on a whole bunch of different projects. <laughs> right. But now the brain trust is diluted, right? So it's going to be really hard to recreate what we've already got going. Mm -hmm. well, you, what I find fascinating about what you just said is that you built the data center of the future to meet the demands of the next future, you know, and by next future, 18 months is like 18 years or 18 minutes, really, uh, in, in this industry right now. Um, and that's one of the, the reasons why I couldn't wait to, to discuss this with you. So let, but let's talk about some of the challenges um, that, that you feel like uh, that the industry generally uh, will face over the next 18 months. And more specifically, uh, Prometheus, as you have truly implemented uh, and have uh, and, and, and have on the ground uh, this kind of very future forward data center design? Well, fortunately, we have a very long time preference in terms of our investment horizon. Uh -huh. We don't have any bank debt. So I don't have any bankers calling me saying, hey, when are you guys going to go <laughs> vertical? Yeah. Who's your tenant? Yeah. Uh, we can hang around the hoop as long as we need to. And uh, go whenever somebody is ready to drop the hammer, so to speak. So there's that aspect. I've invested a lot of my own personal capital. Mm -hmm. So there are people that will be on panels and speaking today who are experts, but they don't have skin in the game. Yeah. I have skin in the game. And that's part of the reason why I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> so we, we joked a little bit about being the baby crocodile in the data center industry. <laughs> Maybe we're more like the cockroach that just won't die you know, <laughs> after the asteroid comes and kills all the dinosaurs. Yeah. We're still out there crawling the, all over the, the there's place. Some, there's some really, really <laughs> interesting uh, sustainability uh, analogies in, in being the last cockroach on Earth. Uh, but we, we'll get into that on our next conversation. Uh, Trenton, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you. You it's bet. You bet. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. Stay happy, stay connected, and healthy, and we'll see you soon.